All right, I didn't mean to make a theoretical video in that last uh, video, but you know, whatever. And what, what I actually intended to do was then work out uh, a problem from the textbook. So let's consider uh, 16, five, number 23. And it's the following. Uh, we essentially want to set up a surface area integral and we find, want to find the surface area of uh, the cap cut from the paraboloid z is equal to 2 minus x squared minus y squared and z, the cone uh, z is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared so uh, again we're only talking about surface area so if we draw a rough sketch of what this looks like um, it'll look like this it will have a three-dimensional region uh, on the bottom uh, this cone is going to cut out then uh, this paraboloid that looks like that okay and what we're really concerned about then uh is we're going to be concerned about if i can fix that circle down here it looks like trash um we're going to be concerned about the surface area of this part up here all right so i'm so it's hard to show it because part part of it is because my artistic skills suck but it's also hard to show three dimensions in uh two-dimensional uh drawings but we're only considering the surface area so so pretend you have like an ice cream cone um, so essentially this cone cuts out like an ice cream cone and the only thing we care about is the surface of the ice cream part right the, the only th thing we care about is the surface of the ice cream and we want to find the surface area of that ice cream scoop that's essentially what we're doing so how do we do that well the first thing we want to do then is parameterize this guy and how are we going to parameterize it well we really got two options okay um, in this, uh, in, in, in 114, we really only use cylindrical or spherical to parameterize. Okay, and what, uh, okay, so the cap cut from this guy by this guy. So what am, what am I going to use to parameterize this surface? Well, it seems like I should probably use uh, cylindrical, right? Because I don't have any z squareds, right? There's no z squareds. Um, I don't have a sphere, so I'm not going to use spherical. I'm going to use cylindrical. And so, how do I use cylindrical coordinates? So we're we'll use cylindrical in this case, and that means I'm going to have a parameterized equation uh, for my surface. I'm going to call it s of r and theta, okay? And the reason is because uh, I know this up here, uh, right, is r of u and v. Um, but again, if, if I have R of R and theta, that doesn't make any sense, okay? That, that I'd have two R's, we're gonna lose track of our R's. So I'm just gonna call this function S, all right? And why are my parameters R and theta and not R, theta, and Z? Well, it's because if you look at this guy right here, you'll see that Z ends up being um, a function of R and theta itself. So we can express Z in terms of R and theta, okay? So the next question then is which surface do I parameterize, right? Um, what what do I want Z to be? Is Z this or is Z this bottom guy? And the answer is Z is this top guy because it's the cap cut from this guy. So we're on the surface because it's the cap from, all right, this green shaded, uh, this green line, right, on the ice cream cone that I'm dancing around with my pen on. And uh, it's just simply cut from the bottom by the cone, all right? It's cut from the bottom by the cone, but the surface area we're considering is where uh, it's from, okay? So where you see if it's cut by something, right? The cap, the, cut, the cap cut by Z, then we're not parameterizing this guy, but we're just parameterizing um, where it's cut from, all right? So I know that might have been a little, uh, mis uh, little confusing, but hopefully if you uh, just think about it a little more. We only want the surface area on the ice cream, so it's where we want the cap cut from. Okay. So, and usually when you and another aside, um, when you're getting cut by something, uh, this by thing usually never ends up um, in the parameters. Uh, it usually helps us. It helps us calculate the parameters, um, but we don't explicitly try to parameterize this guy. Okay. It helps us find the parameters for this guy up here, but we don't parameterize that itself okay so so all that talking now what do i want well our surface then um, when we use cylindrical coordinates right we always say okay x is equal to r cosine theta y is equal to r sine theta and z is equal to z well in our case since we have a surface z is equal to that guy 
right? So now z is equal to 2 minus x squared minus y squared. And this is parameterizing our surface. So, okay, that's fine. That means x then uh, is going to be r cosine theta, okay? And that's the x component. Right? This is the x component. Let's use a different color. Ba -da -da -da. Okay, x is r cosine theta. y is going to be r sine theta. So then we're going to use our sine theta for our y component, right? So that's our y component, and this is our x component. And then finally, we have our z component, right? And what is our z component going to be? So let's use green. This is our z component, right? And z is going to be 2 minus x squared minus y squared, but we got to plug in the x's and y's for, or that's the wrong, those are the wrong arrows, but we need to plug in x's and y's for x squared and y squared. And you see that ends up being z is equal to 2 minus r squared. Okay, so now s is uh, a function of r and theta, uh, and we got our x, our y, our z. And now, okay, uh, and this is how you're going to param usually when you parameterize something in cylindrical coordinates, x and y are always going to be r cosine theta, r sine theta, and then for z, you just got to figure out what equation to use to plug in your uh, to plug in your x's and to plug in your y's. Okay, so again, uh, using cylindrical coordinates to parameterize surfaces. X and Y are almost always going to be um, these two guys. And then Z is going to be uh, whatever surface as a function of X and the Y's, and then plugging in uh, R cosine and R sine. Okay, so enough of that theory. Um, I, can, I can tell this video is going to run pretty long. Um, the next thing we need to do is figure out the bounds on uh, R and theta. So the easiest one to figure out is theta, right? Because we, we got the surface area of an ice cream cone. Okay, and so if you think about it, right, if we just stare at the ice cream cone from top down, it's going to look like a circle. So uh, theta is going to go from 0 to 2 pi. All right, and again, um, theta has to be bounded um, by uh, x's and y's. All right, so you got to have uh, restrictions uh, in x and in y because uh, theta only appears in uh, the x and y parameterization. Uh, so so yeah, theta can only theta usually will get controlled by only x's and y's, and then um, so if it was like x greater than zero, then you're stuck between pi over two and uh, negative pi over two. So keep that in mind. Um, if there's nothing talking about x and y being restricted, then you usually can just assume it's between zero and two pi. All right, r is going to be a little more difficult. Um, so if you remember how we found. Uh, the bounds for R. So this is exactly the same thing as finding the bounds for R when we're setting up an integral, right? Um, when we set up a triple integral for volume, if you remember what that, uh, yeah, if we, when we set a triple integral uh, in cylindrical coordinates back in 15.7, uh, what we did then was we set the z's equal to each other, right? So that's exactly what we got to do here. So I got to have minus 2x squared minus y squared is equal to root x squared plus y squared, all right? And then this becomes minus 2 minus r squared is equal to r, Right, because this is r squared, and then root that is r. And then I get 0 is equal to r squared plus r minus 2. And then r is uh, equal to, what is this? This becomes neg uh, r, is equal to, uh, r is equal to negative 2, or r is equal to positive 1. But it doesn't make sense to have a negative um, on r. So r is going to be 1. And so what does that mean? That just means then that. Uh, at the at the point of intersection, right? So where this green, where the cone and the paraboloid intersect, right? I'm trying to highlight that area right now. Um, it's actually going to look like a circle um, where they intersect there. So and that circle is going to have radius one. So that means then the bounds in R are going to be from zero to one. Okay. And uh, yeah, uh, that, that, that's that's pretty much what that means. So you look at where the intersects and then you uh, solve for r, and then r is going to be uh, from 0 to that value. Um, there are cases where r is not going to start at 0, and uh, in order to see that, uh, I encourage you guys then uh, to, essentially what happens if r is not going to start at 0, there's going to, this, this region is going to have to get cut by something else. So unless this region, um, if this region got cut by something else, then yeah, uh, r won't be from 0 to 1. But since it's not being cut by something else, uh, why is r from 0? Well, it's because at the tip top, right? At, so if we have this ice cream cone at this tip top, um, the r is going to be 0 because the paraboloid like, originates from a point. 
Okay, so that's the uh, uh, reason why r starts from zero, and hopefully why r ends up at one makes sense. It's because r ends up at one is where uh, they intersect, and that's where the largest radius is going to be um, of this surface area of the ice cream cone. Okay, so a lot of talking. Um, so now what do we want? We want to find d sigma, right? And remember what d sigma was for a parameterized surface. We're talking about this guy right here, and let's use this guy. So we're talking about a parameterized surface, and so that means d sigma is equal to the magnitude, in our case, of sr cross s theta. And then uh, we got dr d theta. Okay, and so now I've got to cal calculate the partial derivatives. What is sr? Well, I just take each component and take a partial with respect to r. So this becomes cosine theta, and this becomes sine theta, and this becomes negative 2r. And then I got s theta, so now I've got to take the partial derivatives of this guy with respect to theta, and that becomes negative r sine theta, uh, r cosine theta, and 0. Okay, and now what? Now I've got to cross them, right? So sr cross s theta is equal to is equal to what? It's equal to ugh, whoa, uh, i j k uh, cosine theta sine theta negative two r uh, negative r sine theta r cosine theta zero. All right, bring it back twelve four, and this is why sixteen is so hard. Chapter sixteen is so hard is because it ties back literally everything um, you've learned in one fourteen. So this is going to be equal to then um, you get. Uh, 2r squared cosine theta, and then you get 2r squared sine theta, and then you get uh, r squared, and you get r. Okay? And then, and, and now what? Okay, so you get r, and then uh, now you got to take the magnitude of this guy. So the magnitude of sr across uh, s theta then is the magnitude of that vector, and it becomes. Um, so cosine squared plus sine squared, that's going to uh, equal 1. So you're going to get 4r to the fourth plus r squared. And uh, that's r squared, uh, or just r root uh, 4r squared plus 1. OK, so we found d sigma is, uh, so, so d sigma then ends up being uh, d sigma is equal to r root 4r squared plus 1. OK, and then our integral then is a double integral of r root 4r squared plus 1 dr d theta. And here is where a lot of students are like, so this is surface area. All right, and here a lot of students are like, wait, why is why don't we add another r here? Because remember, when we did cylindrical coordinates, um, I, it, I had such an imperative um, that uh, you needed r dr d theta. And no, this r doesn't count towards that because this r, whoa, I erased it. But this r came from actually explicitly calculating um, uh, the magnitude of uh, the surface uh, of, of the cross of, of the vector of the cross product, right? So, so why do I not add an r here? Well, it's because explicitly I said that d sigma is equal to r u cross r v du dv. Um, it's not it's because u and v can be parameterized using anything. Uh, it's not. Uh, going to be like r d u d v, right? So there's no r that shows up, and so d sigma then just just straight up when you have a d sigma integral, just calculate this cross product, calculate the magnitude, and then just put d u d v only for d sigma. We're not converting from Cartesian to polar um, or Cartesian to cylindrical. All right, we're converting. Uh, we're, we're, we're evaluating d sigma, okay? There's no conversion going on. We're evaluating what d sigma is. It's the definition of d sigma, not a conversion. So keep that in mind. There's not going to be an r here. That's wrong if you add an extra r. And if you add an extra r there, this integral is impossible to integrate anyways. So what was r again? r is between 0 and 1. And theta was between 0 and 2 pi. And so now we got to integrate this guy. Uh, it's, which it, it, it's a pain in the ass, but whatever. So u is equal to 4r squared uh, plus 1, and du is going to be equal to 8r dr. And so what I need to do then is multiply that by 8, and then multiply that by 1 eighth. All right, and then now this becomes integral from 2 pi, and I got to plug in 0 into here. So this inside integral um, actually goes from 1 to uh, 5, right, by plugging in 0 into r and then 1 into r. And then uh, let's see, 8r dr, 
it becomes du, so this becomes uh, root u du d theta. Okay, and we can do this. This this is doable. Um, so this becomes then two thirds u to the three halves evaluated from one to five. Okay, and then I still got d theta, and I forgot the one eighth out in front. That was required. All right, so remember to carry uh, that constant out in front. And then what is this? This is ends up being um, uh, so two thirds. Let's carry out the two thirds out in front too. So uh, it becomes one eighth times two thirds. Um, the integral from zero to two pi, and this becomes five uh, to the three halves minus one, and then d theta, and then uh, this then becomes that's one fourth, so one twelfth, and then you bring a two pi down. This becomes pi over six times five to the three halves minus one, and yeah, that's going to be your answer. The book has it as pi to the sixth times uh, five root five minus one. That's that's exact. This is exactly five to the three halves. And so, cool. Yeah, we, we found the surface area of this ice cream, uh, of the ice cream scoop, right? Remember, we're, we're just trying to find the surface area of the ice cream scoop. And uh, this is how you do it. So this was uh, parameterization in uh, uh, cylindrical. In the next video, or in the addendum, I'm going to do a parameterization of uh, surface area in spherical, which is a little bit more difficult, uh, in my opinion. Uh, it's a little bit more involved. Um, and then I actually encourage you guys then to try uh, to also try out 16.5.24. Uh, and let, let me just so pause the video right now. Go try out 16.5.24. Uh, I'll write the I'll write what I got as the uh, answer down uh, here when you guys are done. OK, so uh, hopefully, yeah, yeah. So hopefully you guys actually try that out. Um, otherwise, there's no point. But you should have gotten this parameterization. Um, is equal to r cosine theta, r sine theta, uh, r squared. All right, and then uh, r is going to be between one and two, and theta is going to be between zero and uh, two pi. And the reason why r is between one and two is because uh, in that problem you have like a paraboloid. I forget which way it's oriented, but you get sliced by planes. So then uh, down here in the bottom, like in, in so on one side you're going to have a smaller circle. And on the other side, you're going to get a larger circle. And the smaller circle is going to have a radius of 1. This larger circle is going to have a radius of 2. And so that's why um, the, 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 the R bounds are uh, go from 1 to 2. Because in this surface, um, remember, we're not talking about the volume on the inside. We only care about the surface, this green shit, right? Uh, that's the surface on the outside. And, and the distance when, when you're on a surface point um, from the center is going to be between one and two always, as you can actually even kind of see from this drawing, right? Because at this surface point right here, uh, or let's use this blue, at this surface point right here, you're going to be one distance away from the center. And then at this purple sur uh, surface point up here, you're going to be two distances away or two units away from the center. And so um, that's why uh, at any other point then on the surface, right? Let's say right here, or let's use a different color except green. Uh, like right here, um, you're going to be that distance is going to be between one and two, and so that then is between one and two. Okay, so uh, so that's going to be a parameterization of that uh, surface, and then uh, you end up doing uh, the double integral of uh, from zero to two pi, and then one to two of r root four uh, r squared plus one dr d theta. So exactly, it, you get the exact same integral on the inside. Uh, and uh, you, you should be able to calculate the integral. Um, it becomes pi over 6, uh, uh, 17 root 17 minus 5 root 5, or 17 to the 3 halves minus 5 to the 3 halves. So uh, that's for 65.4. I highly encourage you guys to go try that. Uh, if you use what, if you do what I did here, uh, you should have almost no problems um, in finding that. And then again, in the next video, uh, we're going to do, we're going to parameterize a spherical uh, uh, kind of surface guy. And then uh, I'm going to talk about, I guess, explicit surface integrals, and then we're going to move on to chapter 16.6.